Hey guys, welcome back. It is July 5th and uh, we're, we're going to have a hell of a great day today. Um, so welcome back, Mob Vlog. Red, how you doing today? On YouTube. Red, how there you doing go. today? I'm doing great. Everybody, everybody I'm doing is doing great. All right. Excellent. So today we are going to talk about JFK, the Chicago mob, and was JFK put over the top by the Chicago mob? Was the was the election a win, in other words, for him because of uh help? from organized criminals, which is what a lot of people seem to think. Uh, but there are people out there that uh, disagree and say, no, 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 nothing. There's nothing in the facts. There's nothing that stands up to that. And we're going to get into that in just a few minutes. Um, uh, if you guys are new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, say hello to a few people. Tommy Bridges, um, Shade Gillis, Shade Gillis. Uh, yeah, like, boy, you, man, I've never seen your name on here before, so let's put a comment up. Do y'all think it was possible that after Kennedy was elected, his dad, Joe Kennedy, had JFK and RFK destroy the mob? Joe was known to shirk his responsibilities coupled with a hit on him. I think possibly he decided that embarrassment wasn't enough and couldn't have his sons under the same blackmailing. Wow, boy. We can get into that. Don Cheech, good to see you. Robert, John Wallace, hello from hot Albuquerque. I don't want to hear about it, man. I clocked 131 degrees on the tour van the other day. <laughs> 131 on the exterior thermometer. Um, crazy, crazy. Um, <laughs> it's, it's good to see you guys. Too. <laughs> yeah, Red's having to deal with the two. That Sean Pender, nice to see you. Christopher Uric. Nice to have you with us. Uh, Rhonda's here. Hello, Rhonda. Tony Johnson. Our Tony uh, <laughs> Haven't seen you guys in a few weeks, so it is good to be uh, to see you and be seen. Um, I had to work one Wednesday. One Wednesday I was sick, got a chest kind of infection going and lost my voice. And then I had to do another tour on a Wednesday. Matter of fact, I had to do a crime tour last week. I, I have to. I got to do one. And uh, Shane came on the uh, tour with his friend Corey, and uh, they did it. So thanks again, Shane, for coming on the tour. Uh, Bobby Bag of Donuts is here. Everybody's here. So let's get into it. Um, why are we hell are we talking about this subject today? And what made us even think about doing this today? And I'm going to tell you why. Um, because it was on the news not too long ago, and um, and um, it was talked about on the news that uh, this, this this just didn't happen. Let's watch that quick clip. Let's roll that. The Irishman presents as fact that Chicago outfit bosses stole votes here and put John Kennedy over the top for U.S. president in 1960. But that appears to be a JFK mob myth perpetuated by Hollywood and not supported by the Chicago facts. See that? It's a myth. It didn't happen. What do you guys it's think? No, it's a reality. Mm. What, what's that, Red? It's a reality? Yes, it's a reality. It was no myth. It happened. As a matter of fact, back in the day, I was alive during that period of time, so I understand. Back in the day, the Herald American was one of the newspapers, and it talked about it in the Herald, Herald American, how the unions from the coal miners down in West Virginia, they pulled the votes there. But... In their, in their story here that they, they show you, um, they said mobsters went out and, and actually wrote the numbers. Down. It wasn't them. It was the first war. Fred Rohde was politicians, but they were mob-connected. So looks like Mike Alexander. Mike Alexander. Not a myth. Yeah. Not, not a myth at all. Not a myth at all. Don Cheech. No. Uh, in my opinion, bullshit. He got tons of votes for JFK. Now, I mean, maybe it didn't happen. Maybe it didn't happen like how they showed it in the movie The Irishman, which The Irishman, I don't know if you guys watched it or not, but um, 
But look, this is just a little clip right here. The film shows Giancana in the back seat of a dark sedan, personally supervising a platoon of Chicago hoodlums roaming a local cemetery and scribbling down names from tombstones, then casting Kennedy votes on behalf of the dearly departed. Yeah, so maybe they that didn't roam not, the cemeteries. That part's not true. All right, they, they didn't roam the cemeteries. They got they got the 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 names by other means, correct? Precinct captain. Precinct captains went out. Ward committeemen. They sent their their minions out to get them. And the dead shall rise. <laughs> okay, John McShane in the book Double Cross. I was interested to learn that the mob supported all politicians they could get their hooks in, regardless of party. They didn't care what party. That's just as long as they could get their hooks no, that's in, fair. right? Okay. Well, I even go with even with, uh, even with uh, what's his name, Nixon, Phoebe Raposa, yeah. that whole. Timothy Foster. I haven't seen The Irishman yet, but I want to. Um, I watched it. I I thought I lost three hours of my life. I got done with the movie. I was just <laughs> like, no, that's how I felt about it. I did. You know, when, when I watched it, Frank was alive back that when, when that movie came out, and uh, he watched it too. And in his opinion, was it was just shit. You know, it was all just you know crap. So um, anyway, it's uh, it's well known that you get to vote in Crook County long after you're dead. <laughs> it's been that. Yes, yes, yes. You get to vote for a long time in Crook County. <laughs> and that's no myth and it's no ghost tale. It's real. Right. Yes. Um, Ryan Brown, hope that you had a good, uh, safe 4th of July as well. And everybody else, um, hope everybody was safe. Did you guys all see that video, the the fireworks that went off in the guy's driveway behind his car? He's listed on a whole box of them. On. You didn't see that video, huh, Rod? I'm sure half the people watching no, it. Did. that around man <laughs> uh julianne did Jeremy. not care did not care for the irishman um not at all i didn't either john mcshane read the book oh was, there was a book before it huh yeah yes i think i did hear that um sometimes the books are usually better than the movies i mean the book casino is way better than the movie casino so jeremy thank you very much why are mobsters so unwilling to talk about Hoffa? Why are mobsters so unwilling to talk <laughs> because about nobody Hoffa? Knows what happened. <laughs> nobody knows what happened, number one. And, you know, two, whoever, uh, you know, got rid of Hoffa probably doesn't want to talk because they could get in trouble. I would, I would think. I mean, <laughs> um, boy, yeah. So, um I watched The Irishman on Netflix, so I didn't pay for it. Yeah, but it's still your time. So <laughs> it's still your time. Um, I've heard a lot about The Irishman. Like, it's all BS, LOL. If JFK was a Republican, he would have set the stage for multiple Republican mayors for Chicago. Would that have set, set, that set the stage? for? It did. Jim Thompson won. Big Jim Thompson won. He was Republican. Really? I yeah. was after, but yeah, but that but, was but, during the era. Yeah, but but JFK was a Democrat, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah, what Sean is saying is that if JFK was a Republican, would it set the stage for multiple Republican mayors for Chicago? Do you think that yes, would have happened? No, nah, think so? Not multiple. It it just whoever the whichever the way wind the wind is blowing, that's the way they're going to go. In other words, we gonna really don't know. If off it, they, they vote that way. That's all. Yeah. Devin Morrell, just like you, Adam, I lost three hours of my life. I'll never get back. That's how I felt when I got done with the movie. I didn't think it was a, a Joe Collada's in the room. Hey, Joe, hope that you're doing well. Good to, good to see you. Um, Frank Shireen is called I Heard You Paint Houses. I heard you paint houses, the name of the book. I remember that book was coming out, man, right when the mob tour was opening, Robert Allen was talking about the book. Um, and it was by Frank Shireen. I heard you paint houses. And it was like a deathbed confession is what it was. This is what happened. And it was a way for the guy to write book 
a write a book and leave some money to his to his widow. That's what that's what Frank's opinion was. I remember him saying exactly that. So the mob supported anyone that would work with them, regardless of the party. The Democrats just happen to be more corruptible. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess. I mean, as an election judge in Evanston, GOMP 3602, I caught a Cook County commissioner who was double registered under a nickname and tried to vote twice. No kidding. A, a Crook County yeah. commissioner? Imagine that happening. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, man. Republicans hated Catholics. He wasn't a Republican. Really? Republicans hated Catholics? I didn't think that there any, was anything got into the religion and uh, politics that they crossed. I mean, they did during that election because the word was that if Kennedy's elected, this mm -hmm. was the word in the newspapers or gossip or whatever. If Kennedy, by priests, uh, used to say, if Kennedy's elected, the Pope is going to run the United States. That was one of the things. And that's not myth. Hmm. I remember hearing it from Father Ballweber. Huh. Interesting. Um, Don Cheech, the Heights went Republican since Chuck Panici. Every president visited there after he became mayor. Wow. I didn't know that. Is it still Republican over there in the Heights? I didn't know that. I, yeah, I, I didn't know. Um, Luminous Grin's been avoiding. it is now. <laughs> Luminous Grin's been avoiding watching it and probably never will. Yeah. Hoffa's a far better movie than The Irishman. Than The Irishman. Really? Uh, Jeremy Perry. Michael Francis claims he knows where Hoffa is. For some reason, it's just still holding back on telling the truth. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Michael Francis? <laughs> this claims, I guess. Somebody said that he claims that he knows where, you know. So, I don't know. He must have done a video on it. <laughs> yeah. 1960s uh people were afraid in 1960 people were afraid of catholics really they were well what's to be afraid of catholics benedict mastriani thank they were you. very opinionated. they were very opinionated they were controlling uh the theaters the cinema the, they had a list in a newspaper of things that were authorized by the catholic church to go see and other things that were banned by the Catholic Church to go see. Oh, so it was like, uh, you can't go to this movie, or you can't go to that movie, and you can't go because this is just bad. And don't go to The Exorcist because, you know, that might, you know, give, be evil and spirits going to get in you and make demons out of you. And you go to that theater, you know, see that kind of smut. I'm telling you, they probably, speaking of smut, I bet you you were on that list of shit you couldn't go see. <laughs> You're like red bookstore you can't go there all right 14 hail marys <laughs> oh man actually i had a priest die in my store <laughs> no no you oh didn't. yeah are you serious you want me to tell you a story, no, tell you a story? Do. yeah okay uh somebody came out from the back room where the peep shows were and they mm -hmm. said, there's a dead guy in the back room. So I went back and I saw the legs from underneath the booth. It was locked. And I called the police. And they brought a stretcher and everything. They took him out. He was dead on a doornail. And Captain O'Connor came up to me. And he said, you look like a nice, fine Irish lad. He said, listen to me. He said, anybody talks to you? He, got, he died on the street while touring Old Town. That's the way it happened. And sure enough, in the reader, I saw he, the father so and so died on the streets while touring our old town because that was their press release. Oh my gosh. Maybe a little That's too crazy. creative district on that one. The Exorcist was okay, Philip Wright said. I was all right. Go to see The Exorcist. But Debbie does Dallas? No, no, no. So, <laughs> no, no, this so, is way back for like a cat on a hot tin roof. That was forbidden to see. 
can on a hot tin that was roof. That see. Because of the language oh, and the technology. Cat oh, on a hot tin roof. That was with uh, Paul Newman and uh, Elizabeth Taylor. Hmm. As Maggie the Cat. Jeez. Of course, the priest didn't have his collar on. Wow. <laughs> no, he did. No, he, he did. didn't. No, he didn't. He was missing his dentures, though. <laughs> they brought his dentures out later. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No. He um, was gay. Oh, my gosh. So, um, Brian, thanks for sending, uh, Adam, thanks for letting me send the information about the Ripper crew. I wish I'd remember to send it to you when you and Red did your video on serial killers. Yeah, I started to read that last night. Thanks, Ryan. But we're going to, we're going to take a look. Um, we're going to take a look, uh, at it. I'm going to go, go through that with, uh, with Red this uh, upcoming week, maybe in the next few weeks, we can do an extra video on it. Um, this is a busy time of year though for me. Um, so Robert Kennedy Jr. is running for president. Yeah, that's been in the news. That's been all around, you know, and uh, that's, <laughs> you know, that's interesting. I mean, it's interesting. Let's see what happens, though. Um, he also said he's going to get rid of the deep state. So he has some um, some of the same ideas that Trump does. Timothy Foster said, uh, said uh, he'll, never he'll never win. Yeah, he'll never win. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so the old town, it was, uh, it's kind of crazy. Christopher Urich, the mob hit Kennedy. Oh, now we're to the hit. We've, we're just talking about getting, getting, making him president. We weren't even to the part of him getting killed. You know what I mean? But let's read the comment anyway, Christopher. The mob hit Kennedy because his brother was going after the CIA and their dirty business and who happened to be the head of CIA? Bush Sr. At the time, Bush Sr. So, don't know. Um, Scott Mattaggart, well, the um, uh, the stream shouldn't be out of focus. Um, at least it doesn't look like it's out of focus on our ends. So, maybe it's your connection that could be the problem. I, I don't know. Um, nobody else is saying that it is. So, um Bobby hated Italians because he wanted to be one. Bobby, Bobby hated the Italians because he wanted to be one. He was a Capone, Capone, Capone something. Um, uh, I hope they don't assassinate him to Jesus. I would hope not, American gangster. Boy, I don't think you had to hope for that. <laughs> um, so... So Bush, Texas, deals with Jack Ruby, hire Oswald for the hit. Did we see? I know we're going to go down some kind of weird rabbit hole that we're going to start this thing up and go, oh, let's talk about. Well, we didn't even finish talking about what we were going to talk about. So listen listen to Binder, and he's going to put together uh, all of the um, the pieces here. Okay? So listen. He's going to give you a laugh. Give me a laugh. <laughs> no. Let's watch this clip. According to Binder, there were no reported high levels of vote fraud, polling place intimidation, or violence by outfit thugs, although he says the movie and several mob books the past few years have rewritten a sexier version of history. Now it's treated. Yeah, so <laughs> it says it's a conspiracy theory. All these conspiracy theorists out there, okay? Listen, this is what it takes to create a conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theories have a certain recipe to them. You must put in two cups of the Kennedys. You must put in at least a big cup of the mob. If you can put in a couple of tablespoons of Marilyn Monroe and a half cup of Frank Sinatra, so much the better. I have a question, Red. How come you only need a couple tablespoons of Marilyn Monroe, but you need two cups of this guy? You need guy five cups of her. her. I think you need five cups of her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she was more man. popular than all of them. She was more popular yeah. than all of them. I would think so. I would think so, you know. I mean, that was Marilyn Monroe, man. Playboy, you know. That was like the whole... Yeah. Anyway. Well, it's a proven fact. She slept, with them. she slept with all of them, so what's the difference? Well, it's true. So, you know, 
Linda, who was Officer Tippett? How you doing, Linda? I hope you're doing well. She's a, she's a good friend from back in uh, Chicago. Aries, a fellow Aries. So, who's Officer Tippett, Red? Officer Tippett was shot and killed uh, not far from Oswald's home. And they said Oswald did it, but it's been proven that he didn't do it. Hmm. So from what I've read, both Ruby and Oswald had connections to Carlos Marcelo out of New Orleans. They did. Yeah. But we're talking about him getting elected, though, today. That's what we're we're on, guys. So, um, all well, right, like, Robert. I the horse. <laughs> yeah. Robert Mas Masatelli. Uh, Bush was not the director of CIA at the time. But there are pictures of Bush outside the depart the depository in Dallas uh, the day Kennedy was assassinated. Bush was right on the steps. Well, CIA invented the term conspiracy theory. Luminous grin, I'm with you, man. Until 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 Kennedy was shot, they didn't even have the word conspiracy theory put together. It was just yeah, I think that they they just told all the newspapers start printing this conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory, and say it over and over and over. So Cindy Burke Workman, her boobs was eight cups. <laughs> Marilyn, at least eight cups for her boobs. Cindy, I hope you're doing well. I haven't seen you in a while. It's nice to see you. Uh endangered species. Oswald blamed innocence the whole time. Wow. Um Jeremy Perry. I didn't realize it until I watched the videos, but I actually lived in the same building Frank lived in in Vegas. I listened to all Frank's videos several times over driving Uber. Casino is my favorite movie. Jeremy Perry, man. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe. What was your apartment number? And I'll tell you what apartment number Frank's was. Uh, it was me, Adam. Sorry. Scott McTaggart. It was me. What was you? I missed something. Uh, the term conspiracy theory was created to make Kennedy's assassinations researchers look crazy. Yeah. Oswald was a puppet. Yeah. <laughs> love, love you guys. A show. Keep up the uh, good work. Thanks, Carl. Glad that you're enjoying it. Um, <laughs> glad that you're enjoying it. Those that know the truth will Kennedy uh, with Kennedy will die with that truth. You'll never know. You may only speculate. That, that's true, too. You know, but you know what I liked? Does you guys remember at the end of the movie, The Rock? Do you remember that movie, Red? Yes. Yes. Remember, yes. Remember what Kim Kim Kennedy, at the end? In the movie, he said, you want to know who killed Kennedy on the microfilm? <laughs> yeah, the microfilm in the church. That was a good movie, man. I liked that movie. Um, Excellent. That was, that was fun. That was that was a was a fun movie. There's no such it thing as conspiracy theory. So like <laughs> What's that? Remember the guy that when he threw him over to the side, and he tied the cord to his uh, arm, he stretched it out for the FBI agent. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, he was getting his hair cut. Yeah, he was getting his hair cut, and he took the shower curtain. Uh, there, yeah. Um, Jeremy Perry, right, Scorsese movie. Who else could have played Tony Spilatro if not Pesci? We need a movie based on Frank and Tony's relationship. I'm going to film school. That's definitely a future possibility. Jeremy, that's, uh, yeah, great, man. That's awesome. That would be great, that is, Jeremy. That'd be awesome. Um, uh, okay, we will know about the Kennedy killings uh, when we know about the death of Hoffa. Don't hold your breath, Jim Yeager. No kidding. Um, <laughs> okay, here we go. Tony Johnson. My grandma was an election judge in the f old first ward. Those precincts were coming in 500 plus votes to zero for JFK. The precinct coats changed some ballot to Nixon. So it wouldn't be so obvious. Wow. That was the first right. ward. So... Yeah, Joe Kennedy made a deal with the unions and the office to tilt the election. Then, when he had a stroke, they had no control of JFK or RFK. Oh, he had a stroke after that, huh? He had a stroke. Joe yeah. Kennedy right after uh, JFK, after JFK was shot, he had a stroke. Ah, 
Uh, Linda, the conspiracies are all true. I'm with you, Linda. They're all true. We never went to the moon. Area 51 got to aliens, you know. <laughs> no, man, it's all true, dude. Did you see that UFO came down in Vegas the other day? A few weeks ago, I should say. Did you see that? They even showed the officer's body cam, man. The police officer go up and the kids were like, the, the, the alien's 10 foot tall and big eyes. You know, they looked very, very, you know, they looked very um, sincere about what they were saying. So, but I think the uh, men in black got there and cleaned up everything before, you know, they could, you know what I mean? Well, they do that stuff quickly, and then they have the thing that, you know, what's that called? Where the jig and your memory's gone? Neuralizer? Isn't that what it is? It's a neuralizer? The flash. Yeah, the flash. I don't oh remember thing. What happened? Yeah, Don, I'm telling you, I saw the, the video of that. And, and the cop's like, dude, he's like, my partner saw something fall out of the sky, too. And, you know, yeah. So... It was a weather balloon, a really, really tall one. <laughs> Bobby Bag of Donuts, yeah. I can hear George Costanza. It's not a conspiracy if you believe it. <laughs> Von Pastor, man. Um, that's funny. So, okay, the unions. Get back to this. The unions. Endangered species. Let's put your comment up there. The unions were used to sway the votes. Unions were very powerful then. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I mean, that's what, that's what I've all the years. Yeah, who controls the unions? Organized criminals. So the mobs controlling the unions, and you got these guys. Didn't you say too that they would take people off the street and they would they bring them in to vote and pay them? You saw that happen. Well, they had those names, the list of names. Yes, I did. I mean, Tower Oldsmobile on uh, wow. Wall Street. I actually saw it. I saw people coming in. They were dressed. They were like skid row bums and they give them a dollar, one dollar to go and vote. They're standing there with a stack of dollar bills going, eh, eh, eh. wow. Um, Kissy Cat, elections can be changed. I ran the election for the class song and picked the song I wanted. <laughs> so you, you screwed your whole class, huh? <laughs> you were like, oh, it's going to be what I want. <laughs> She admits it too. See? Um, so Alberto Lopez, they're gonna make alien movies. Uh they they already do make alien movies. <laughs> you know, they started making alien movies though. Think about this. They started making alien movies like right before or right after Roswell happened. And then all of a sudden it was like invasion from Mars and all of these, you know. And they started that. was that. a big movie. Invasion from I, Mars was the first big one, I thought. Mars, War of the Worlds took place. When was War of the Worlds? That, uh, that was Orson, Orson Welles. Welles originally. Yeah, when did he do that? I'm not uh, hold sure. on. Uh, hey, Google, when okay. did War of the Worlds first air by Orson Welles? Let's find out. Sorry, I don't have any information about that. Really? You're Google and you don't have any information about that. Uh, now I have to go to Google and type in Orson Welles, War of the Worlds. Let's see. Bobby Bank of Donuts says 53. 53. So it was after. I think 38. 38. That's what we got here. 38 on the radio. So that happened before Roswell. They had the War of the Worlds. Right. Show. But I think that I think all the aliens, all of the aliens is a, uh, uh, they're all, all those movies, it's propaganda, man. It's getting us ready. It's getting our minds ready for when they tell us control the aliens. Us. Control us. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Joey D, my whole family worked for the city. So you must have seen a lot of, a lot of things go on. The whole family working for the city. Um, Parts of the Roswell crash. Holy shit, we are all over the place today, man. We're supposed to be talking about did Kennedy get the you know elected because of the mob, and we're talking about. I, we're talking about the how many Roswell. people? How many people that are in the room right now put a one up if you believe that 
the mob stole the election for Kennedy. Oh, you know what? Good idea. Let look only vote one time, guys. I want this to be a fair vote, okay? Because <laughs> we're talking about stealing elections. One, if you think that the mob put him in. Two, if you disagree. Only vote one time. Let's see what, what comes up here. Um, everyone, even George Washington, got everyone drunk and took them to go vote. Every election's been stolen. Uh, George Washington, even. I mean, George just, he acted the part, man. He dressed the part. He acted like he was president and a good leader. And they put him in. That's what I heard always happened. So, I don't know. Boy, we're getting a lot Sonny of ones. Sonny Zaro's the only one that said no so far. Oh, we got one, Ace McMullen. He said no. Morgan. Ace Mulligan does not think... And Sonny Zaro does not think that the uh, mob stole the election. But I am counted at least 35, 40 ones in here so far. So, um, Devin, I think the Chicago mob had a well, hand in it. I don't think they stole it. Why do they have a hand in it and not steal it? They'll get the hand they in the cookie jar. They didn't take the cookie out. You know, how do they have a hand in it but not do it? You know what I mean? Like that doesn't just make make sense. <laughs> Michael Graham, one of the polling places during the '60s was in the basement of the building I lived in. All the votes were always handed to the precinct captain, who made sure that the votes went Democrat. <laughs> Michael Graham, I'm telling that's you, right. that's right. Well, that, that's that's what it is. Um, Even the election judges, the election judges that I saw, there were two Democrats and one Republican, all women. Really? Yeah. That's how they would. Here's how they did it. They told the unions to put pressure on the members to vote for Kennedy. They said, listen, you got to vote for Kennedy. You want this union to stay together? You got to vote for him. You want your so, job? You want your job? Yeah. I mean, that's just <laughs> Tony Johnson. You forgot the part where Chicago outfit sent people to West Virginia to buy the votes and spread the money. I, Do tell, no. Red. We were starting to talk about that the other day. Well, that was the unions. Uh, actually, Giancana was heavily involved in that. Um, but he, he told people, go down to West Virginia and make sure that they vote Democrat. Because at that time, they used to vote Republican. And so he said, make sure. And West Virginia really carried the vote, not Chicago. West Virginia is the one that carried it, huh? Yes. Mm. I mean, Chicago did vote Democratic, but West Virginia is the one that really took it. Nixon didn't have a chance. Jeremy Perry, 4D, first floor, adjacent to the hot tub, right in front of the tennis courts. You sure? That's country where... Club, country, country Club Towers? Because... I don't remember tennis courts, but I could be mistaken. I just don't recall in my mind seeing tennis courts. I remember sitting on the balcony and seeing the pools. I mean, there could have been tennis courts back there, but uh, it was 408, was it, on the fourth floor? 408. Same floor. Same no, he floor. said on the first floor. He was on the first floor in 4D, but I don't remember having letters. I thought they were just numbered, the apartments. And the first floor was 100, 101, 102, 103, I thought. So, um, but I, I don't I don't recall. The other side thought. facing DI, Jeremy says. On the other face, um, facing DI. Uh -huh. Positive, it? positive. Okay, got it. On the other side facing, facing DI, got it. Who was on the other side? Okay, yeah. So that was the same building. Yeah, same building. Nixon was um, short 51 electoral votes. The mob may have tipped Illinois 27 and Nevada 3. That gets him 30. So he's still 21 short. Um, <laughs> Gomp. In Illinois, precinct captains have real-time access to who has early voted and whose mail ballots have been returned. And they have to do is cheat as stuff drop boxes with mail ballots for non-voters. They yeah. use machines. I, I, I agree, uh, Brian. Red should be in a smoking commercial. He should be the Marlboro Man. <laughs> I am. Tony Johnson. The, 
they found out who really ran the country in West Virginia and gave them a bag of money, for example, the sheriff or judge or a town's mayor, whoever was the person that controlled the county. Yeah. So uh, they found who really ran the county. Sorry, I read that. I misread that. Uh, I said country, I think. Uh, Red Fox gave Pat Morita his down payment for Pat's house. I didn't know that, but what the hell, Kissy Cat? That's so off topic. <laughs> Joe Colada, he's voting one. Even okay? Joe Colada put a one on. Even Joe's voting a one, all right? <laughs> Come on. I mean, you know, yeah. 408, what a great trivia question to spin the wheel, LOL. <laughs> Yeah, we got to start spinning the wheel again. That's fun. Well, we should also acknowledge Hoffa was doing the opposite. Okay. Back to the shooter. Lewis Cole. James Files. Here we go. James Files. He was the shooter. Chicago associate. He said Johnny Roselli and Charles Nicoletti and four Cuban shooters in the Daltec building. You watched all those Files videos, right, Red? Timothy yes. Foster, D didn't Frank Rob? I also Fox, talked yeah. to. Um, I also talked to an agent that was working on that case, and, you know, of talking to um, uh, Files, and the FBI agent called me at home. I don't know how he got my number until later, but um, he asked me, "Did I ever meet Files and stuff like that?" And I said, "No," but he confirmed that files uh, had the proper information. And he also told me something else because I was confused about it. He said, well, I asked him, I said, why is he coming out admitting to a murder? And he said, because he got immunity from the governor of Texas. And murder was a local crime. It wasn't a federal crime back then. Okay. So that's how he got away with doing it. Do um, I believe it? Yes, I believe it. Guys, smash the like button, okay? If you're coming in here, just hit the like button. If you're new here, um, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. We uh, we uh, talk about the Chicago outfit and and various other things uh, on the show. So um, yeah, so if you're new, be sure to do that. Uh, Red here, Red over here. He's uh, uh, the author of the book Nobody Cares and What I Did About It, and. Uh, if you haven't gotten it, you haven't read it, be sure to pick up a copy. Go to redwomet.com and grab a copy from Red. Get it autographed by him. Uh, and if you guys come out here to Vegas, take the Vegas Mob Tour. Uh, that's what I do. And I uh, run the uh, the Vegas Mob Tour as well as the Haunted Vegas Tour, Good Springs Ghost Hunt, Vegas Crime Tour, which is our newest tour, and um, another tour we're getting ready to open as well. So, uh, But the Vegas Crime Tour is something special. You hear about John Wayne Gacy out in Las Vegas. You hear about Steve Wynn's daughter being kidnapped, the Luxor car bombing, the Hilton arson. You hear about the degenerate nurses at one of the hospitals betting on when people are going to die. Um, at least were accused of it. Okay, it didn't, didn't happen, but they were accused of it. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say they were when they weren't. But um, you hear about Tupac Shakur. Uh, we just had just had Officer Chris Carroll take the tour. And uh, he was the last person to talk to Tupac while he was uh, alive. So uh, he just took it. Interesting guy. Him. I like him. Really, it was really a good tour. So um, it took a long time to put together, and it's a pretty moving tour. So uh, matter of fact, Shane and Corey just took the tour last Wednesday. It's the reason that we weren't on last Wednesday was uh, because I was out with them. We just got done with a Vegas crime tour and I have Shane and Corey with. What did you guys think of the tour? Good tour. Good tour, I love the, uh, the OJ and everything on that. And uh, the stuff that you learned about the John Wayne Gacy actually living in Vegas. John Wayne Gacy, yeah. That was yeah, crazy. yeah. Cool stuff. What more what, what about you? What was your favorite part? Uh, I really like the tribute part they did for the people by the Mandalay Bay. Yeah. The Vegas Strong. Pretty moving, uh, pretty moving walk yeah, that we yeah. went on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No. All right. Yeah. If you guys get out here to Vegas, use promo code MobVlog and we'll see you prescribed. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys, if you're watching. 
uh, for taking the tour. Yeah, O.J. Simpson you hear about. You get the whole story of Buffalo Jim Barrier. There's a lot involved. With it. It's a lot of uh, a, a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, come out. Be sure to do it, and uh, we'll have a good time. So, you know they're going to build a memorial out there by the Mandalay Bay, Red, where the Harvest 91 uh, Festival. Yes, uh, I voted. I voted on it. You went and looked at the the thing. Yeah, I, I'm hoping for the angel wings. That's my hope. Anyway, out of the five, was there five? That's what I voted for. Yeah, I like the angel wings. I hope everybody is. Uh, I hope that's what they decide on. So, all right, let's get back to the comments, guys. Um, so let me get down to the bottom here. Adam, whoa, hold on a second, guys. Um. First time on chat interacting. Very exciting for me. Jeremy Perry, glad that you're having a good time. And uh, it's fun. That's what we do here. We have a good time. So Tommy Jeremy, Bridge is like, sure. hey, join, me, join us on the after show. Jeremy, join us yes, on the after I, show, Jeremy. Jeremy, I do uh, actually uh, host the tours. And uh, go read the reviews. And then use the promo code MobVlog and come out on the tour. It's uh, It's a lot of fun. Uh, Devin Morell's booking the uh, crime tour in October. Devin and his wife came out and did the mob tour. Uh, it was nice. It'd be nice to see you guys again. Um, so I just sent two videos that were sent to me yesterday. I got to look and check. So, oh, so we don't go on a crime spree on the crime tour? <laughs> no. But you know what happened? You know what happened? Three weeks ago, I forgot to lock my van I forgot to lock it and in the morning my neighbor texted me and she said the other neighbor down the streets truck got rifled through last night somebody came through the neighborhood and I went no I went outside I, oh well my stuff's still sitting there on the thing but the glove box was open and I, talk about a weird thief okay so the thief came in I got him on camera all right I got his face looks like Skeletor so I got him on camera, and he rifles through the van, and there's, look, there's stuff in this vehicle for the crime tour that, it, you know, I got patches, police patches, and challenge coins, and all, you know. The dude took one of each thing, of each item, <laughs> selective thief, and then took my sunglasses, but left the charging block, left the police badge, <laughs> left the, you know, like, what in the hell? But he took my sunglasses. So the Vegas crime tour bus is officially an actual crime scene. Crime scene. <laughs> yeah. Come and ride on the crime scene. <laughs> That's right. It's the actual crime scene now. So, uh, Adam, are there are the underground tunnels around near Bally's? Uh, the underground tunnels, if you're speaking of the uh, aqueducts, the main ones are right behind the link parking garage and that's where the strip meets the water when it rains so adam's tours are the best i've been on all of them some of them more than once yeah you have scott h it's uh it's uh yeah um ooh, next time i'm an adam sonny he's been on the crime tour too he was on it actually with scott h he would they were my first two that christened the tour that took it out and they were the first two to experience it so um it's a little warm for a suit looks nice thanks uh, hey, Ryan Brown, I absolutely say Red's book is great information. Uh, it's filled with lots of interesting information. Uh, I'm currently rereading it for the second time. Say, so, there you, you go. Go get the book. Go get Red's book. So may, maybe a memorial near Lake Mead. Just a thought. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's see here. Not a greedy thief, Adam. No, Van Pasterman, that's not a greedy thief at all. It's like, the, he, my neighbor, he left the walkie-talkie sitting on his front seat. He left, he going, what the hell? Like, maybe the guy was just looking for money so he could buy more drugs. So, anyway. Um, Adam, I talked to Mike Hammer about your van. Huh? <laughs> Mike um, Hammer is a detective. <laughs> Well, yeah, but there's Mike. Okay, got it. There's a Mike Hammer. I got a, a buddy named Mike Hammer too, so that's why I'm just. I was like, well, I'll talk to Mike about it. <laughs> anyway, um, it's been uh, it's been fun so far today. 
So sorry, Adam, but the sun was blocking my eyes and I missed the rest of your items. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, that wasn't a thief. That was one of your groupies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. That's funny. He didn't look Sounds like it on video. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Sounds like an inside job to me. Yeah, inside my van. <laughs> uh, best, best pizza place in Vegas. John Hoochin. It's Giordano's. Windy City. Giordano's. That's 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 it. Windy, Windy City, City beef. We, we you know Windy City beefs uh, and pizza in Henderson. That pizza I've tried too. That's pretty damn good. So yeah. Sorry, Teef. It was a what? Teef. A teef that broke in. Uh, <laughs> I say it was the neighbor that called you. <laughs> uh, just love Giordano. Yeah, me too. Love it too much. So uh, we're going to be a pretty interesting uh, uh, talk on uh, Red's show. If you guys are coming in late, though, before we, we get to that, let me play a couple of clips here. This is what we're talking about. And this is what we we're discussing today. And I'm just going to play through these again um, because I, I guess according to John Binder, uh, Chuck Gowdy, uh, this, is, this, this didn't happen. The Irishman presents as Didn't fact happen. that Chicago outfit bosses stole votes here and put John Kennedy over the top for U.S. president in 1960. But that appears to be a JFK mob myth perpetuated by Hollywood and not supported by the Chicago facts. See, it's a myth. It's a myth. I think it's by the fact I was alive then. I was alive then. I remember that election. Not many people do. I don't know how many people in the and the room were alive then. If they were alive, they were probably three, four years old. But um, I remember it. Well, you know, I wasn't even alive when it happened, so I didn't have any say in this. I'm just going on by what's, what's said, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's apparently it's a conspiracy theory, and this is the recipe. Conspiracy theories have a certain recipe to them. You must put in two cups of the Kennedys. You must put in at least a big cup of the mob. If you can put in a couple of tablespoons of Marilyn Monroe and a half cup of Frank Sinatra, so much the better. Oh, there you go. Bunch of sugar. <laughs> and you got to mix all of that up. And yeah. <laughs> Democrats cannot win without cheating and cannot live without lying. It's a fact, Dr. Shu. I mean, you know... I, I don't know. Endangered species. I watched Patrick Bet David interview with Frank. It was great. I miss him. Yeah, it was that was a good interview. That's actually that's actually was the catalyst for the idea to start this channel was because after Frank did that interview and he told me, he said, I didn't want to tell you how much my phone started ringing. And I said, Really? <laughs> that powerful, huh? It's that powerful because look, I got on YouTube back in 06 and it was just so I could store videos up on, you know, online of uh, magic stuff that I could show people. And that, that's all it was. So anyway, that I didn't realize the news is run by the deep state. It's well known that the CIA controls the press. Yeah. Now, isn't this Kennedy that's running right now talking about going in there and dismantling the CIA and everything? Isn't that? He is. He certainly is. I mean, it's, he this also is said how he's going to expose. He also said he's going to expose the people that murdered his uh, father, Robert Kennedy. He got Siron Siron out of jail. He paid for his attorneys. Siron Siron never murdered him. Who's Siron Siron? Robert Kennedy. He allegedly murdered. He was convicted of murdering Robert Kennedy. Senior, okay. not Robert Kennedy Jr. J Jr. has actually paid for his defense to get him out. He's out of prison now, after all these huh. years. Wow. Um, he really wants to expose the deep state. Huh? <laughs> um, John G. John Finder is very knowledgeable, but on this, he's wrong. Well, you know, he, he wrote a paper, John wrote a paper about about this and and he compared election statistics 
to how much was there a big increase in Democrat voters? Was there a big increase in this and that? And said that there is no no way that anything was so, uh, I mean. He wasn't on the scene at the time. All of his research was done for newspapers. Uh, Joe Kennedy that's was what a moonshot. John does. Okay. That's how he had so much money and power. So, um, Brian Glade. No, we go past it. They turned uh, the, the Sanford junk shop. Um, so when, when Fred, Fred's, when Red Fox was broke, he uh, opened up a little store down the street where he was selling secondhand store where he's selling his things to raise money. And, uh, it's, what is it now? It's a payday loan place. They turned it into, so it doesn't even look the same in the front. So, yeah. So he still had connections in 69 from back in the bootlegging days. Apparently, apparently luminous. That's he called that's Sinatra. What, he called Sinatra. Joe Kennedy had Sinatra go there to his home yeah. in Hyattsport. That's a fact. So I think you guys are all talking about um, Marilyn's teeth here in the side comments. It's just a side note. Um, you know, when she first got to Vegas back in the 40s, she was only here for six weeks to get a quickie divorce from James Doherty. But her, her aunt had to take her to the dentist. She had trench mouth. Um, Marilyn <laughs> did. So, yeah. I, so they <laughs> say. No, well, that's, 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 I think it's a fact. Um, but well, I think she had something wrong with her mouth, but I don't think it was her mouth. <laughs> Saran Saran was standing in front of RFK, but he was shot from behind. Red, you're right on money. Right on. Um, yes. See, I'm, I'm always here. I'm here to learn too. Thank you. Rich. It was a patsy, just like Oswald was. Saran Saran. So. <laughs> Um, that makes sense, Lumeris. Yeah, I mean, it could be hard to fire three more bullets than your gun holds. Yeah, I guess that that's probably that's no. Yeah, place a twenty-two security behind, finished him with a thirty-eight. Saran Saran was controlled by MK Ultra at the time and placed with a twenty-two pistol. Security behind Kennedy finished him off with a thirty-eight. Uh, that's Timothy, correct. what the hell, French mouth? All right. Hey, Google, what's trench mouth? On the website mountsinai.org, they say trench mouth is a painful form of gum swelling, gingivitis. The mouth normally contains a balance of different bacteria. Trench mouth occurs when there is too much pathologic bacteria. The gums become infected and develop painful ulcers. Ooh. People also sometimes ask me, how do I know if I have trench mouth? Do you want to hear the answer? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think I have it, so I don't think I need to ask. <laughs> How do you know? I think I think if your your mouth starts hurting like hell and you got ulcers all over your gums, maybe you have trench mouth. God, that's nasty. Um, Jesus. Uh, killed her with pictures, Adam. <laughs> you what? Luminous Grin says, show us the pictures, Adam. What pictures, Adam. What are pictures of trench mouth now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not happening. Oh, my gosh. So, Red, since yesterday was the 4th of July, Red today decided that his show is going to be about um, his experience. Um, we started to watch Born on the 4th of July yesterday. And I turned it off. My wife never saw it before. I only watched that movie once and uh, had my mom over and um, put it on. We got about 50 minutes into it. And I said, all right, that's like, I want to watch something a little more happy. You know what I mean? Um, and, uh, and so we put on Ready Player One and we watched that movie instead. But I went back to thinking about that movie and I asked Red about it last night. And he went, oh, my gosh. And said, I want to do a show about it. So that's what the show's going to be on. Um, I'm throwing my stuffed that's peppers sweet. in the garbage now. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Sorry, Don. Didn't mean to gross you out that badly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. 
Anyway. <laughs> Oh, talking about bad breath. I know, Cindy, that'd be really bad breath. So you guys want to have some fun. We're going to be over there on Red's channel. And uh, for the first time, he's going to be talking about your experiences in uh, Vietnam. No, no, we're set up to talk about the murders, Steve Tushin's murders, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, we have this thumbnail right here, don't we? Okay. Yes, we do. Yeah, yes, we do. The- we'll be talking about Vietnam. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I thought that's what we did. Yes, so sir. I hope I'm not, uh, you know, setting this up wrong. So me too. <laughs> <laughs> let me look. let me look. No, I, I'm I'm almost positive that's what it's supposed to be about. So when I say almost positive, I mean almost positive. Okay. Devin Morrill, I'm going off topic. Red, did you say you came up with Russian Quicksilver? Red did say that. Yes. Yes, I invented Rush. He invented Rush. There you go, Devin. Red's the inventor. Rick Silver was just a byproduct. It was owned by Great Lakes. Okay. Uh, Shay Gillis, you guys think Joe Kennedy had his kids go after the mob after he was elected to rid him of his past and hit any hid any black males? I have no idea. I mean, this is you guys in the comments would be better on this or red. Do, do you think that they do you think Joe had his kids go after the mob? Red? Hey, Red. Yes. You, you, you yes. do? You think so? Yes. To get rid of his past yes. and high belt. All right. Yes. But, all right. I always so, did believe it. I always did believe it. So there you guys go. You guys have it right there from uh, from Red. And uh, Joe Bogaisky says, no. How you doing, Joe? Man, I went to high school with this guy a long time ago. Wow. I hope you've been do- doing well. <laughs> so, no, only Bobby. Bobby Bag of Donuts says, no, only Bobby. Bobby acted on his, his father's, Bobby acted on his father's uh, instructions. So did okay. JFK. No, I they think Bobby did. hated them. Read his book, The Enemy Within. This is all interesting stuff. We got to check that out. Um, but look, today's been fun, but we have to wrap it up. And uh, it's been a great time. Red, I'll see you over on your uh, channel. And uh, you have a great day. The rest of you guys all have a, a blessed day. And uh, enjoy the, uh, you know, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the day. We'll see you guys next uh, next week.